Now, we're going to move now to the, directly to the mind, because that's really what we're interested in, and we're going to talk about trying to change our way of being, change our way of living. And for a practi- as a practical matter, what that comes down to is trying to change certain behaviors, change certain habits, cha- especially habits of mind, by the way. And I, there are different ways to, to uh, create metaphors for this, but the best one that I've found is quite ancient, and also it's been used throughout the years for the last 2,500 or 3,000 years, and that's of an elephant and its rider. And uh, let me give you a picture. Okay, there's an elephant and the rider. And basically, we have our conscious mind, the mind that we think with. That's the one that makes New Year's resolutions. That's the one that says, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose 40 pounds, or I'm going to go to the gym every day, or I'm going to do this or that or whatever. That's the one that tells us what we're going to do or what we should do. That's the writer. But then we have the elephant, which is the rest of the mind. That's the pre-conscious mind, which is that part of the mind which you can access if you try, and then the unconscious mind, which you can't get to except in dreams and in other, in other specialized uh, techniques. But for all practical purposes, it's roughly like a, a writer and an elephant. So now, everything's just fine if the heart and the mind are pointed in the same direction. If the uh, elephant and the rider, okay, the rider being the mind, the conscious part of the mind, and the, and the elephant being the rest of the tonal, as long as they're pointed in the same direction, everything's just ducky. But let's say uh, the elephant decides, well, you know, there's a nice fresh stream of water over there, and, you know, maybe there's some nice grass or whatever, and the rider wants to go and keep going into town or whatever. Guess which way they're going to go? They're going to the stream, correct? Unless you train that elephant. And so training that elephant or learning to, to master your elephant, your mind, as opposed to being mastered by it, is a lot of what this talk is about today. Now, one of the things that's quite clear, and we know this from data and experience, is that contrary to popular belief, it's much easier to change your way of uh, thinking by changing your behavior than the other way around. So if you behave in a different way, then your thinking will follow. Most people do it the opposite direction. If you stop smoking, for example, just as an example, after a certain point, you're going to conceive of yourself as a non-smoker. Okay? It's the stopping smoking that comes first, actually. And then later, you, your mind changes, and you go, oh, well, yeah, no, I don't smoke because I'm a non-smoker. That's an example. So it's much easier to behave your way into a new way of thinking than to think your way into a new way of behaving. Critical point. And here's another critical point. Nothing, nothing is difficult once you are used to it. And this sounds so obvious, but I can't tell you how important it is to understand that once you're used to something, it ceases to be difficult. So maybe the first week of going to the gym or the first two weeks or three weeks or four weeks are difficult or whatever, but after it's become a a habit, once it's routine, it's no longer difficult. So nothing is difficult once you're used to it. 